How do you actually get one or keep one? Or for that matter, make one go away quickly? And generally, how big is one supposed to be? Can they hurt you or even kill you? We recently came across a highly disturbing headline in British news media that read, Married man dies from his own erection. Gee whiz, we thought, that's really not good. Especially if you're at that stage in life when you can consider yourself a veritable champion of the chubby, a prince of the pocket rocket. But was this killer erection a true story or was it misinformation or maybe a little bit of media exaggeration? We'll get to the weird and wacky stuff like that later, but first you need to know some hard facts about the bulging bratwurst. Not all erections are alike. They come in different shapes and sizes and each has its own peculiar habits. But we all have them for the same reason, which is related to sexual pleasure and procreation. Even so, male fetuses can have erections in the womb. It's also not uncommon for infants and young children. This certainly doesn't mean the kid is having sexual thoughts, it's just an accident of biology. Completely normal, although in very, very rare cases, if the boner stays, he might have what's called a prolonged penile erection. We'll talk about that later. For now, just know that for any male child, well before he even realizes what an erection actually means, the process is totally natural. It doesn't mean he's a freak or overly sexual or any different from any other kid. Just about all babies and children get the occasional accidental boner. Males can reach puberty anywhere from the age of 9 to 14, although for many males it's somewhere between 10 and 12 that things start to change. Between 15 and 17, his puberty phase will come to completion. Welcome to the early stages of manhood. When a boy's puberty hormones kick in, the testicles usually get bigger, hairs spurt around their genitals and under their arms, and importantly for this show, at least, erections become more frequent. These erections also start getting paid for their hard construction work, meaning they start to receive and eject semen. You might not know it, but your semen is impressive stuff. Each package of semen contains all matter of treats. It's a 5 to 25 calorie goodie bag of vitamin C and B12. It contains calcium, citric acid, fat, fructose, lactic acid, magnesium, potassium, sodium, zinc, and all manner of proteins. Within water, mucus, and plasma, all those nutrients act to keep the spermatozoa alive. Spermatozoa are the life-giving property contained inside the semen. With each ejaculation, around 200 to 300 million of them might waste away on some tissue or a sock after 15 to 30 minutes in the external world, or in the act of making love, they will try to survive the trip inside a woman's reproductive system. In what is literally an adventure of a lifetime, a single sperm might reach a woman's egg as soon as 30 to 45 minutes after takeoff, but it might also take hours. Sperm can actually live inside a woman for up to five days and still have the ability to fertilize an egg. If not released into the wild, the sperm can stay alive in a male body for 74 days. After this period of time, the sperm will die and be reabsorbed by his body. Once a boy has been through puberty, he's a sperm-making machine, an absolute warrior of productivity. He'll produce millions and millions of sperm cells every single day, each of them tiny, measuring about 0.002 inches. That's small, but the full semen package can be substantial. It can taste substantial too, coming off as bitter and salty, but it can also be sweet or metallic tasting according to those that have dined on this delicacy. In interviews, one woman said it hardly tastes of anything, if not a bit salty. While Michelle, 24, said, It's a tolerable taste, but not something you'd choose to snack on if it were an actual food item. But Michelle, just think of all those wholesome nutrients. We're joking. You'd actually have to consume gallons of the stuff to get any dietary health benefits. And the fact that men produce 1.25 to 5 milliliters of semen per time on average, gallons would be hard to come by. Excuse the pun. Okay, so how does your body keep making this endless stream of sperm, which by the way, will add up to about 7.5 liters for the average male life? The process of making sperm involves something called seminiferous tubules. These are home to germ cells that hormones such as testosterone turn into good old sperm. These germ cells grow up to become little tadpole things which are able to travel up another tube called the epididymis. They spend about five weeks in this tube and then move on to something called the vas deferens. This is an ongoing process until you die, unless there's something physiologically wrong with you. Still, you produce less sperm in older age. It takes about two and a half months to turn a germ cell into a sperm cell that's mature enough to make the journey to the egg and create a new human. 
you can't turn this process off. You have a lifetime supply. Even if you masturbate 80 times a day, apparently a guy from Argentina won some kind of record and did it 83 times in 24 hours. But even he would have had something left on round 84. Even so, a study from 2016 found that when three males held off masturbating for several days and then ejaculated four times with two-hour breaks in between, they produced fewer sperm each time. Another study found that when men were habitual masturbators, while their sperm count dropped, the quality of the sperm wasn't affected at all. Even if you never ejaculate at all, your body will just reabsorb the sperm you produce, and the process keeps turning over. So-called fabstinence won't harm you at all, but it may make you feel horny or expedite a wet dream, aka nocturnal emission. There are people that believe abstinence from masturbation provides them with mental health benefits and higher levels of energy. Maybe they do feel that, but there's no science as yet to prove it. Moving on, young men tend to get hung up about ejaculating too quickly when they finally get it on with the person of their dreams. We've all been there. Well, most men have. This is called premature ejaculation, which can be a problem for some men and their partners. 30% of the male population in the whole world experiences regular premature ejaculation. You're not alone. Finishing too fast or not being able to start, which can produce what's called sexual performance anxiety, will at one point or another be a factor in just about every male's life. Thank God then for the squeeze method. This is when you squeeze your penis to stop yourself from ejaculating. You need to squeeze something called your frenulum, which is the part of the penis where the head meets the shaft. Just a bit of light pressure with your thumb and forefinger can stop you from finishing when you don't want to finish. You could always just let it go. Young men are usually easily capable of two to three orgasms a night. They also have a short refractory period compared to older men, meaning they don't need to wait so long to start the next round. According to research, the average intravaginal ejaculation latency time, meaning the average time it takes a man to ejaculate once he's entered the vagina of a woman, is six and a half minutes. But only for guys aged 18 to 30. More recent research said 5.4 minutes is the average time for men of all ages. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, aka the DSM, describes premature ejaculation as a persistent or recurrent pattern of ejaculation occurring during partnered sexual activity with approximately one minute following vaginal penetration and before the person wishes it. Back in 1948, Alfred Kinsey's research found that three-quarters of American men ejaculated within the first two minutes of penetration. This was for heterosexual men, but we looked at forums where homosexual men talked about it, and a lot of respondents said around five minutes, sometimes less, sometimes more. As for what women want, a recent poll showed that the average time women want to be enjoined in coitus was 25 minutes. But the poll didn't specify if foreplay was involved. We imagine it'd be pretty normal for a woman to feel rather upset if the entire routine was over in just a few minutes. Whatever women want, they're not likely going to get the Hollywood montage lovemaking scene every time they go to bed with a guy. It's just not a reality for most people. Five minutes is a job well done for most of the world. Okay, so what actually makes boners possible in the biological sense? The Roman Greek physician and philosopher Galen, who took medicine and medical research to another level in antiquity, thought long and hard about the stiffy. That's not exactly how the medical books put it, but Galen did spend a fair bit of his time musing about the inflation of the male appendage. The Roman elite would go to him seeking advice on why their John Thomas was no longer standing at attention, hoping Galen could give them some ancient form of Viagra. He told them to anoint it with honey before sex, or put arugula seed in honey and drink it. If that didn't work, he told those desperate men, whenever the bull urinates after sex, mix the soil and the mud made by the urine into a plaster and anoint it on the penis. Galen was smart, but he didn't have a clue about how the male phallus became hard. He believed it was a matter of air being pumped into the penis, but he was well off the mark. Then Leonardo da Vinci came along in the 15th century and blew up the world of science. Was there anything da Vinci couldn't do? He wasn't just a talented painter, he was also an ingenious scientist, including a notable egghead where human anatomy was concerned. He drew a lot of pictures of the penis, and he understood that the penis became hard because of blood, not air. He came to this conclusion after dissecting the cadavers of men that had been hanged. When such an execution occurs, the male member does indeed become erect, and as da Vinci found out, it was because it was filled with blood. This is because a part of the noose creates pressure on the part of the brain 
called the cerebellum, and this excites the nerves. The dead men can stay hard because in death, blood pools where gravity wants it to pool. In fact, many types of swift and sudden death can lead to an erection. Men can also ejaculate, pee or poop when they no longer have control of their body. The 18th century Swiss anatomist and physiologist Albrecht von Haller took things a little further. He said the nervous system rules the penis. The penis does not have a mind of its own, as many men and women have said at some point in their life. But the brain does indeed cause the penis to inflate. Von Haller, the so-called father of physiology, knew that it was the nervous system that was responsible for the bulge in a man's pantalones. When you're sexually aroused either by touch, sight, or thought, the autonomic nervous system kicks into action. This is the part of the nervous system that makes things happen without your conscious input, such as controlling how fast you're breathing, or when you need to pee, or indeed when you become erect. You can't control that. As much as a 16-year-old boy would love to make that erection go away in gym class when he sees the person he adores running around, it's not something he has much choice about. He can be aroused by touch, of course, but in this case, thought does the job. His brain creates hormones that send a cascade of blood into a spongy tube-like structure inside the penis known as the corpus cavernosum. And the penis fills up. It's just like filling up a rubber glove with water. Pour just a little bit of water in and you can have a pretty soft and limp glove finger. But pour a lot and it gets really stiff. The more you're aroused, the more blood gets pumped. High testosterone levels, which you have during puberty, make the blood pump harder. It also happens in the morning, known colloquially as morning wood. The technical term is nocturnal penile tumescence. Scientists say this is all about hormonal testosterone changes when you sleep. It might also be the fact that the sacral nerve is pressed when your bladder is full. Teens and young adults get them more than older guys. When you get hard, blood is redirected from another part of your body toward your penis. For those of you with very large penises, a doctor explained in an interview, you almost never find a penis so large that a man would pass out when erect. On average, an erection takes about 130 milliliters of blood. That's just a bit less than your standard glass of red wine in a restaurant. So, if you ever find yourself getting an erection across the dinner table from someone, just imagine all that wine flowing into your penis. Given that the human body carries around 1.2 to 1.5 gallons of blood, you easily have enough to redirect to your penis when nature comes a-calling. This brings us to another matter. As we said, some people, especially younger guys, don't always welcome their erections when they come at the wrong time. You might have heard you can meditate or take a cold shower to get rid of your erection, but let's face it. That wouldn't work in a class or in the backseat of a car. Sure, you can focus on the recently deceased dog that you loved so much or perhaps imagine talking to your grandmother. That's the psychological way of escaping your embarrassing erection. Tried and tested by boys and men for millennia, but it doesn't always work. A doctor in Britain also said you could try flexing a muscle, especially a big one, such as your thigh muscle, as this would redirect blood away from your corpus cavernosum. You also have a tube on each side of the penis, so it's really the corpora cavernosa. The NHS in Britain said to try jogging to get rid of the erection, which again is useless advice to a guy at a pool party or on a first date. We know what an ill-timed or undesirable boner feels like. Surplus libido can be challenging, so better advice would be to do this squeeze method again. Not try to stop ejaculation, but this time to bring on softness, aka detumescence. A 10-20 to 20 second squeeze should work. This isn't about interrupting blood flow, but making something called the bulbospongiosis muscle contract. This muscle plays a major role in erections and ejaculation. Some of you will be familiar with the difficulty of achieving an erection while drunk. This is called alcohol-induced erectile dysfunction. The same might happen with medications because these substances are what are called central nervous system depressants. Booze interrupts those messages being sent to your brain from your nerves. When drunk, arousal is harder, despite what you might tell yourself. Also, because alcohol makes you urinate a lot, your total blood volume will be reduced, and as you know, you need that blood to fill your tubes. There's also the fact that alcohol can make you dehydrated. This can lead to a hormone called angiotensin being released, which in turn causes vasoconstriction, a narrowing of your blood vessels. You might be able to get hard, but it might not stay hard if there's vasoconstriction going on. Another thing young men and some older men for that matter get hung up on is penis size. Some guys are obsessed with this, which is actually quite a modern phenomenon 
The ancient Greeks and Romans used to think small penises were admirable. They said large pieces of junk were for ogres. These days, men will pay good money to try to make their penis look like something the Greeks and Romans considered backward and vulgar. You'll never see an ancient European statue with a 10-inch schlong, that's for sure. Not unless that statue is supposed to depict something ogre-like. It's only us modern folks that put a lot of emphasis on the size of the penis. But the vast majority of women will tell you it's what you do with it that counts, and of course, how they feel about the owner. Research shows just 69% of women have an orgasm when they have sex, compared to 95% of men. Research also shows that women have a higher chance of orgasming with someone they're in a relationship with. Penis size is rarely a factor, since it doesn't really affect clitoris stimulation. The clitoris, a super-sensitive erogenous zone that can bring on an almost instant ecstasy, is the little hooded button of sorts above the vaginal opening and the urethra. You don't need an outsized schlong to stimulate it. In other words, it's no use having a $12,000 Pinarello carbon road bike if you can barely even cycle to the local convenience store without getting tired. Actually, that happens all the time, and some men might think their large phallus is enough for women, but it's not. Not usually. Then again, in a recent study when women had to choose from a penis in a series of 3D penis models, the results showed the ideal penis measured 6.3 inches in length and 4.8 inches around. They might be disappointed in real life, considering the average erect penis size is 5.2 inches long and 4.6 inches around. This data was from a 2015 study which importantly made sure the 15,521 participants couldn't do the measuring themselves. Numerous studies over the years, including a recent one in the Journal of Sex and Marital Therapy, show men all over the world often lie about their penis size, or at least tend to overestimate their penis size. We imagine many of you just did that when we started talking about penis length. Since we are so obsessed with male schlongs, such a penis size study has become controversial. Some of them have said penis size changes depending on the race of the person, but looking at studies from all over the world, it seems the average guys are usually somewhere between 5 and 6 inches, with outliers of course. Some erect penises are more like 3 and a bit inches, a micro penis, and there are men with much longer penises. It was reported not long ago that a guy in Canada was recorded as having an 18.9 inch penis. A fairly recent British TV program on Channel 4 called My Massive Huh? showed that men often struggle with their extra-large penises. Some studies have said there are countries where guys have longer penises on average, such as the Republic of Congo. The scientific journal Personality and Individual Differences said the men living there had an average penis size of 7.1 inches. That same study said in general men living in African nations had longer penises while men in Northeast Asia had smaller ones on the average, but that same study said men in Ecuador and Colombia were also quite a bit over the average. Other researchers have said race doesn't mean anything where penis size is concerned. One such study in the U.S. said Asian American men, Black American men, White American men, Pacific Islander Hawaiian men, and Native American men all had pretty similar penis sizes on average, somewhere between 5 and 6 inches when fully erect. We guess researchers will have to disagree on this matter, but something they don't disagree on is that some men are showers and some are growers. If you walked into a male changing room, you'd notice that some men have dongs hanging out like genetically modified bananas. You look around and other guys have penises peeping out from their pubic bush. How can this be if males are all supposed to be a similar size? It just doesn't make sense. The answer could be the difference between showers and growers. According to one research study, if guys grow more than one and a half inches, they are classed as a grower, and if they grow less than that, they're a shower. Many men grew 2.1 inches in the grower category, while in the shower category, they only managed to blast off a meager 1.2 inches. Sometimes the growers grew by more than 2 inches, and sometimes the showers barely budged. Out of 274 reported participants, 73 men were growers and 205 were showers. This has a lot to do with the difference in tissue elasticity and blood flow. Hey, put your ruler away, please, there's more you need to hear about the erection. Some of you will be very aware that the extended penis doesn't always stand up straight. When it looks like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the medical term is penile curvature. Your Leaning Tower of Penis, if indeed you have one, usually leans anywhere from 5 to 30 degrees to the side. It's more like a curve, but it's also like it's leaning. 
we could find no statistics about which side it leans to or how many men in total are leaners. Most have some curvature. If you're born this way, it falls into the congenital penile curvature category. It's not usually a cause for concern, but get it checked out if there's pain or if it really bothers you. It can also develop later in life, which is called Pyrenees disease. This is when scar tissue makes the penis bend, sometimes as a result of very aggressive monkey spanking or another penile injury, such as someone accidentally sitting on it while it's erect. Ouch. Again, if that causes issues, see your urologist. You might be handed a suction device to straighten things out. It seems we humans have evolved to have larger penises than our primate ancestors, which might be because women's vaginal size increased over millions of years to fit humans' bigger heads with their bigger brains. And men's willies also got bigger around that same time, so sexual satisfaction was suitable enough to cause ejaculation. Nature wants nothing more than us humans to enjoy sex, only because nature is selfish and it wants us to procreate and pass on our genes. Nature doesn't really care if the male is a grandpa and the female still studying in college. Even so, men tend to have sex less the older they get. In one study, it was discovered that people between 18 and 29 had, on average, sex 112 times a year, which is twice a week. It was 69 times a year for people who were between the ages of 40 and 49. There are many reasons why men might lose their ability to achieve an erection in older age. It's not certain that they will, but it sometimes happens due to a large number of health issues and also just because men at an older age produce less testosterone. Some men remember worrying about finishing too fast in their youth, and when they get older, it goes the other way. They can't even start. How cruel is life? Around 40% of men have some erectile problems when they're as young as 40, and by 70, about 70% 70 of men have some sort of problem with erectile dysfunction. Another academic paper said 67% of men have erection issues by the time they're 50 years old, and 89% of those who reach 75 do. Even so, there's no reason with some medical intervention that men need to give up on erections. Ask Robert De Niro and Mick Jagger who had kids in their 70s, or Al Pacino who just knocked out another kid at 83 with his 29-year-old partner Noor Alfala. Men can make babies up until they die. In 2010, a man in India named Ramajit Raghav had his first child at the ripe old age of 94. No one to let age hold him back, he had another kid two years later. In his 90s, he said he was having sex three times a day, which he put down to his diet of vegetables and grains. He died in 2020, aged 104, with an erection. Just kidding. But now we need to ask if a man can overdo it with his erections. Can you overuse and abuse your male member? The philosopher priest Thomas Aquinas called masturbation an unnatural vice. The American Puritans said it was evil and wicked. An 18th century Swiss physician named Samuel Augusta Tissot wrote that it could cause nerve damage or worse, insanity and blindness. But it seems he thought that about intercourse too. And what about the guy we mentioned at the start who apparently died from his erection? According to the National Survey of Sexual Health and Behavior, which interviewed 5,865 respondents in the US aged 14 to 94, the average guy in the 18 to 59 age bracket only masturbated a few times a month, or maybe just once a week. Other research said 20% of American males masturbate more than four times a week. The average, according to another study, said it's 14.8 times per month on average. We imagined that 0.8 was such a disappointing endeavor. That's a joke again. Other people obviously do it a lot more. On a forum, one guy wrote, It can vary slightly, but on most days I masturbate between one and three times per day. Another guy wrote, For me on average, about three times a day. Got a very high sex drive. These lean, mean, stroking machines are not doing anything dangerous. It comes to them naturally. They are built for it. It's thought the average man will have three to five erections per night's sleep. And if you count the entire day, the average is more like 10 or 20 erections. In the midst of puberty, males may indeed find they're getting stiffies much more frequently. Nature didn't make it harmful to us, although psychologically speaking, something like watching too much pornography could have some negative consequences. Each of these many erections a male has in one day will last for anything from 33 seconds to 44 minutes. There is a dark side, though. Some men get what seems like eternal erections. This is a condition called priapism. 
It could mean staying hard for two hours or more, and the erection can get pretty painful. In fact, it can turn into a medical emergency, which if not dealt with may mean permanent damage to the penis. This has nothing to do with the male feeling hyper-aroused. It's about the blood being stuck in there. His glass of wine doesn't return to the decanter. If you find this happens to you, for maybe two or at worst four hours, you need to go to the ER preferably not in your jogging pants. It's hard to say if one of those long-standing erections can kill you or if they're just there when you die. Sometimes it's referred to as a death erection or angel lust, which, as we said before, can happen when someone is hanged. But they may start when people are alive. It's very rare, but we found a case in 2021 in which an American died in a hospital after a three-hour priapism. He had many health issues and was diagnosed with COVID-19. The British tabloids also reported about another case in which a man in Nigeria was said to have died from a prolonged erection after taking medicine known as manpower. A Nigerian newspaper said he must have died from consistent hardness. This was the story we referred to at the start of the show. The man may have had priapism, but it's more likely the tabloids exaggerated his erection and he died from some other health issue. The odds of you dying by erection are about the same as you being abducted and examined by alien physiologists. There's absolutely nothing unnatural or dangerous regarding regular penile tumescence, so all you princes of the pocket rocket are very safe. Now you need to watch an old classic, What Happens to Your Body When You're Having Sex? Or have a peep at How Did OnlyFans Become So Popular? Explained.